This is Tanda Keeley. She has two children, her daughter, no matter. And her son, forward. Tandakile was already struggling with poverty and shortages of food when her husband Donovan died of COVID-19. Since then, Tandakile has found it even more difficult to have enough money to pay for food for her children. Tandakile and her two children are fairly typical, unfortunately, of many of the individuals and farmers communities that we support in Zimbabwe. She lives in a part of the country which tends to be very difficult in terms of farming. Trokra and our partner Caritas Bulawayo have been working with the family and their community. We supported the community to set up and manage a community garden with an agroecology learning centre and a seed bank. The Tandakile is a member of the community garden group and she's received training on climate resilient agricultural practices and also inputs such as seeds. Trokra and our partner Caritas have built a solar water system for the community garden as well. COVID-19 has made it very difficult for people in Zimbabwe to make a living. For many people that we work with, like Tandakile, they depend on cross-border trade with neighbouring South Africa. Since the beginning of the pandemic, the border has been closed and that's meant that they've lost a really important source of income. Trokra and our partner Caritas have been supporting people with these challenges. So first of all, we've been providing cash distributions to people for their immediate food and other basic needs, also to prevent them from having to use negative coping strategies, such as selling assets or not paying their children's school fees. We've been raising awareness about COVID prevention and vaccinations and undertaking awareness raising in communities and over the radio. I think um, like many parts of the world, one of the impacts of COVID was due to the lockdowns that were imposed. People couldn't make a living the way they normally would. And we're talking about a country where the vast majority of people make their living from the land. I need to be physically in the, at the land, at their, at their farms or at the plots to make a living. I'm glad to say though that even in the most difficult circumstances where there was strict lockdown rules in place, we managed and our partners particularly managed to safely get waivers from government so they could still travel out to the rural areas to support the communities that were particularly affected over that period. One of the awful things about the pandemic is that we saw across the world and in Zimbabwe a sharp increase in violence against women, which was already a big problem. In Zimbabwe, during the first lockdown in 2020, there was a 61% increase in reports of gender-based violence incidents to service providers. So Trokra and our partners have been working with communities to address this. We are providing quality, safe services to survivors of gender-based violence, such as legal counselling and psychosocial support. We've also been engaging men and women to reflect on and to shift attitudes about gender and to prevent violence against women in their communities. And then also our partner Musasa Project has been advocating for improved service provision for survivors of violence and also for increased protection of women and girls. Because of climate change, cyclical droughts and heavy rains and cyclones have become more frequent in Zimbabwe in the past five years. In Matobo district, they've experienced a drought in 2019. In 2020, they've had mid-season dry spells and also experienced a severe cyclone in 2019. The frequency and the intensity of droughts have increased. And at the same time, even when we have got good rains, like what was projected for the 2021-2022 rainfall season, we have already realized that instead of us having the first rains by the 15th of October of each and every year, we only received the rainfall in December, at the end of December. The current information that we have is that by the first week of January, about 2.5 million people were projected to be food insecure in 2022. Currently in Zimbabwe, according to the World Food Programme, around 5 million people are facing food shortages in the coming months. There have been crops destroyed due to very heavy rains in the past year. That will require a huge effort from government and 
donors and NGOs and, and, and organisations like ourselves working with our partners in local communities that are badly affected to try and um, provide them with some respite from that situation, helping them to grow their own food where they can and to supplement that from external sources where that may be needed. We have been having drought uh, in su successive years as well as mid-season dry spells which are not good enough for crop farming. A raw household that depends on crop farming will face serious challenges when there are droughts. There are very limited livelihood options available in the raw areas. Trokra, through the livelihood program, has been helping a number of communities in four districts of Zimbabwe with interventions that are aimed at coping with climate change. The districts that we are targeting are usually affected by droughts, maize, which is an import into Zimbabwe from outside countries, it has never been a good crop for the farmers in the face of any drought. We have other traditional varieties of fruit and vegetables that we really help farmers understand the value in the face of uh, climate change. There are a lot of interventions that are carried out by Caritas Blawayo. This is a community of farmers. To be a farmer, they need seed. Through Caritas Blawayo, they established a seed bank. And in that seed bank, farmers bring in seed from their harvest and ensure that the seed is well protected from a lot of pests, from even rains and moisture. So the farmers who are members of that seed bank will come during planting season. They will go there and take the seed from the seed bank, share the seed that they do not have at home with the other farmers. There is a community garden that was established by the community with support of Caritas Bulawayo uh, that was receiving also support from uh, Trokra. And this community garden at least provides the community with a lot of vegetables and these sustain the families. Now labor has been reduced because the farmers now can get water from the tap and easily water the gardens. Instead of having two, three, four hours of watering using some buckets and, you know, pumping water using the hand pump, they now get water which is coming from a tank right to the taps within the garden. We're lucky to have a really great partner, Caritas Bulawayo. Trokra have been working with Caritas in Matabele land since 2005 and Caritas have really strong relationships with the communities and local authorities there. They are local, they are on the ground, they are where the people are. Their field officers are there. I can get hold of them anytime to ask about what is happening in the area. They have adjusted to the community way of life to such an extent that they are able to get a lot of information from the communities they really understand the needs in the context and have been working with the communities for a very long time to address the issues that they're facing. I think the fact that they are really in the community, part and parcel of the community, they understand very well some of the challenges that are faced on a daily basis by people who find themselves in very difficult circumstances. I think that gives them a, a real advantage in terms of designing and delivering projects and activities which really meet the felt needs of the community. Many things go to the Irish public, the Irish government, and the support we are getting from Ireland. I wanted to say thanks so much to everyone back in Ireland for your support for Trokra's work through the Lent campaign. With your support in Zimbabwe, we'll be working with communities for more climate resilient food production and improved diets, also providing sustainable, clean water sources and also ensuring that there is access to gender-based violence services and support systems, particularly for women and girls. I think without that core support from our supporters back home, none of that would be possible. I think there's a huge appreciation from the team here and all of our partners and communities we work with 
to know that people back home are thinking about people in difficult circumstances out here, it really makes a big difference. Thank you and thank you very much.